So guys, it is now day tress. Three days post-op, but yeah, three days after my fistulotomy surgery. I am doing much, much better. Feel good. The local anesthetic that I mentioned in the previous vlog, which, you know, when they opened up my fistula, they, you know, obviously it's going to hurt because it's a cut. They gave me what's called, I think it's called Expirel, local anesthetic, da 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 da, and it should last like anywhere from three to five days. It is definitely starting to wear off, and I'm feeling, I wouldn't say pain, more along the lines of discomfort. I am still using my little donut pillow thingy. Absolutely amazing because it helps relieve the pressure, obviously. So I've been using that. And I've been doing sits baths. That's one thing my doctor told me. Uh, do three sits baths a day. Those of you who do not know what a sits bath is, because I didn't know what, what it was either up until like February of this year. Warm water, Epsom salt, like bath salt, stuff like that. And you literally just soak in it. And for me, it would be my booty would be soaking in it for 15, 20 minutes. Nice warm water. Take a shower afterwards. Rinse off thoroughly. That's it but it has very good healing properties and I really think it's helped a lot, honestly. So I'm continuing to do them and yeah, there's different ways you can do it like in your bathtub or they actually sell, which this is how I started doing it earlier this year, was a like a little, like a reverse inverted hat thingy that goes like over your toilet. So you fill it up with water, put it, put the Epsom salt in there and then you sit in it. And then like if there's any overflow, there's like these little like drainage and it goes right into the toilet super convenient super nice like it it helped in the moment that i needed it the most when i was in excruciating amount of pain from this fistula for those of you who did not see that vlog definitely check that out because i would be crying in pain i mean i would literally be on the floor of my bathroom in the fetal position crying from how excruciating that pain was and i guarantee you somebody watching this vlog is gonna be like i gave birth to three damn kids you don't know what pain is well that pain sucks still so as i mentioned before in the previous vlog the surgery that i did was pretty straightforward i had the seats on place back in february of this year and that was because i had a fistula the anal fistula is like a little canal that bridges off from the rectum it's not natural it's not supposed to be there fecal matter going through there infection bad you don't want that so they threaded the seats on, which they say it's rubber, it's plastic. They, you know, help drain everything. Great. Since I have the colostomy, they can actually remove the seats on. They did it. Since my fistula was very under the surface, they were able to just slice it open. Yay. So since they sliced it open, it can now heal openly. And that's a good thing because since I have the fecal diversion, that's a pro, that's a benefit. So now the next step is i in a few more days i have a follow-up with my surgeon he's going to look at me and i say we have a very intimate relationship because he pulls down my pants and looks at my booty <laughs> janice laughs he's gonna make sure everything's okay no signs of infection or any kind of issues like that and shut up they <laughs> like chuckles in the background <laughs> from there we're gonna talk about what is the next step now if the fistula heals up perfectly fine, nothing else has to be done. If over the next couple of weeks it doesn't heal up for whatever reason, he can then go in and do something like close it up better or whatever to basically solve the problem. You know what I mean? But that's another surgery, another surgical intervention, and it's kind of like, you know, it would be the best choice, the best course of action for me in the long run is to let it heal on its own. So we're trying, since I have the colostomy bag, this is the perfect time to do it. So once that is taken care of, next step of when should I reconnect? I lightly touched on this in the previous vlog. I am now at a point that I can reconnect already if I really so wanted to. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing because I don't have the colostomy bag anymore. And even though I don't really mind it, would it be nice to not have it? Of course, who wants to have a bag of feces on their stomach every single day? But again, I don't really care. If I have to have it, I have it. It's not a big deal. Once I do reconnect, I face other issues. So obviously it's another major surgery, complications from the surgery, and so many more things can come from it. That's one. 
Two, it's a very high possibility that when they do the reconnecting, at the site of the reconnecting where they suture the colon back together, the Crohn's can come back right there again. Horrible inflammation all over again. And if it gets to be really bad, very painful, and if it gets really bad how it was before, blockage, another, then that can be an emergency surgery, colostomy, and we don't want that. So those are all things that we have to see. Now I can keep the bag for longer, and most likely I'm gonna keep it for a while because it has given me a quality of life that I am very appreciative of. I have suffered for many, 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 many years, and I am happy that I have finally reached a point where I feel better. I'm not at 100%, but I feel so much better. I can do stuff. I can take care of my daughter. I can take care of Janice. I can go do stuff, be better, more physically active than what I will have been for the past few years. It's not to say that having a colostomy bag is all pros. There's a few cons. I have a prolapsed stoma. So my stoma is kind of like an inny. It was like in the valley of like the inflammation and swelling from surgery. Obviously all of that has started to go down and it takes a long time to go down, but now my colon likes to stick out like a solid like six inches <laughs> and it sucks. The first time it happened, it only stuck out like that. I flipped out. I wanted to go to the hospital. I had no idea that was a thing. And my doctor was like, oh no, you're fine. It can stick out like six inches. And I was like, <gasps> and now it sticks out like six inches some days. And I'm just like, cool. The problem with the prolapsing is it doesn't affect my output, thankfully, because if it affects your output and it, and it kind of like blocks it, that's a problem. Thankfully, I don't have that problem. Number two is the pain. My, my colostomy is on this side. My colon goes from here, here. It doesn't go down anymore because this part is now gone, obviously. So when I start to prolapse, it's like pulling whatever's left here. It's like pulling it out and it hurts on my right side. So that's a problem because if it, it, it can get pretty bad where I, I can't lift weight, I have to go lay down instantly. Like if I lay flat for like 10 minutes, my colon goes right back inside. So there's ways around that. They can go in and just remove the, the length of the colon that is prolapsing, but that's not the idea with me because I want to preserve as much colon as possible. And that's just for people like me with Crohn's disease, that's what you want to do. Then option number two would be to install like a mesh. So if you have a hernia, they install a mesh or for, you know, prolapse stomas, they can install the mesh and it kind of just holds everything in place and doesn't allow it to prolapse. I am and I am not a candidate for it at the same time because of this. I am because I'm having severe prolapsing, but it does go inside and it doesn't affect the output. So it's like, yeah, but at the same time, this is another surgery. They have to cut open, stick this mesh in, all other more recovery and stuff like that. And since I am going to reconnect eventually, there's kind of like, why are you going to do the mesh if you're going to reconnect? Now, if there is no option of reconnecting, such as they have removed my rectum completely and I only have what left of my colon, at that point, yes, they would do the mesh. It's permanent. This is it for the rest of your life. No big deal. So it's kind of like I am, but I am not. And this is the things that we have to go discuss with my colon rectal surgeon in a few days. Once we touch base with him, see what's going on, go from there and uh, we will uh, bring you guys along for that journey because that's gonna be an emotional fun day. That is gonna be it. You can see Janice is eating her food here. <laughs> We're just chilling in bed. Sushi is having a wonderful nap. I am here relaxing, just wanting to take a chill, take it easy. And yeah, so guys, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe we truly appreciate all the love and support and you know we've done patreon posts you know giving updates about you know what's going on with me and the outpour of love and support has been amazing so thank you guys so much truly appreciate that when you do subscribe don't forget to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get all the notifications of every time we upload so guys that is going to be it so for now uh, la, 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 la. So, for so now, guys. Uh,